Hi there guys and welcome back to the Red and Blue Site YouTube channel. It's time of course for another Palace preview. Big game on Monday night. Palace are away to Leeds. A chance for us to do the double over Leeds. I didn't think I'd be saying that going into the season, especially the way Leeds have been playing at times. Um, but it's not just a chance for us to do the double over them, it's a chance to go into the top 10. And that is the big question. Will we get into the top 10 with a win away to Leeds? Or uh, will it be another one of those disappointing away days where you know Leeds get a bit of redemption after um, those you know slightly flattering scoreline uh, in the reverse fixture at Selhurst, which wasn't really a four-one result, but uh, was a great example of how to get at a team like Leeds with their open the way, the open style of play that they have um, under Bielsa, albeit very entertaining, but can leak goals at times. Um, yeah, looking into this one, I think that that will have a big part to play in it. I think the fact that Leeds got I wouldn't say humiliated, but it was close to being a humiliation. A result, as I said, that probably wasn't um, was, was flattering uh, of us slightly. We played very well that day, but obviously Leeds had two massive moments in the game with VAR disallowing um, a couple of goals. And if on another day, if those had gone uh, gone gone a different way, then arguably it should have gone the other way. Then of course the scoreline wouldn't have been what it was on the day. Um, so Leeds will be else as no mug. He's going to know that you know. He's going to remember that result. He's going to know which players are targeting our team, which I will come on to in just a moment. And we've got to be wary of that. We've got to be up for it. We've got to continue this run going. Two really good wins against Wolves and Newcastle has moved us into a lovely position now to focus on trying to get break into the top 10, which I realistically, I think, from now to the end of the season, should be our aim, trying to get into the top 10. Um, uh, Europe, I'm not going to bother talking about Europe. We, we we flirted with it last season and we all know what sort of run we went on on the end of last season. So no point talking about that. But top 10 is a realistic target for us. And these sort of games, I think, are a great indicator of where the team's mentality is at, the way we approach it, the way we go into it. Are we in that mindset of let's get into the top 10 or are we in the mindset of we're, we're safe now? Are we just going to flirt around in the bottom half of the table? Um, it'll be interesting to see. Yeah, and how I think the game will go, Roy's going to set up, I think, the same way he has done. Um, I'd be really interested to see if he will stick with the 4-4-2, uh, which he did away to Newcastle for large parts of the game. Um, or will he go back to the 4-2-3-1, which I thought was fantastic against Wolves and really highlighted the the, the best out of certain players. Eberieze, for example, in the middle, looked fantastic, got a, a fantastic goal, the winning goal as well in that game. And... Yeah, as he looks great wherever he is on the pitch. Don't get me wrong. He's been my player of the season so far. Him or Wilf, of course, for the goal contributions Wilf's given this season. Um, they've been fantastic. Obviously, no Zahar in this is a big loss. But having a Bereze in the middle, I think, adds a bit more of a, a bit more to his game. He gets on the ball a bit more. He'll be involved in the creativity of the team a little bit more than while, rather than being out wide, cutting inside. So I'd love to see him go to 4-2-3-1 in this game, Roy. But I can honestly see him, like Newcastle, sticking to a 4-4-2. And I'm um, looking to break on the counter. Problem is, are we quick enough to break on the counter? Yes, we were opened up Newcastle a couple of times, but that's because Newcastle were particularly poor that day, I thought. Um, and Townsend, of course, should have buried that chance at the end. It was a shocking miss. Great win, and we deserved the three points. And we were clinical from set pieces, which is something good to see. We don't usually score headers or anything like that from set pieces. Fantastic from Gary Cahill. Hopefully more of the same in the, in this game, because I think set pieces will be important. But um, yeah, we set we set up slightly different to the way we did at home to Wolves. I think Roy's definitely away from home, but first setting up with the two banks of four, looking to frustrate teams and break on the counter. Although, albeit that that's been our big problem in my opinion this season, we've not been anywhere near quick enough on the counter attack. We used to be very, very quick and direct. Um, I think maybe it's got something to do with an aging squad. Um, Roy not particularly playing that fluid counter attacking style. I don't know, but um, we're, we're definitely not as quick on the counter attack as we used to be, and it is um, affecting some of these. There's, there's definitely opportunities we've had this season where we could have really challenged um, the opposition goal. And we've been too slow out the blocks or we've made the wrong pass, a sideways pass rather than a forward pass. And, and the chance is gone. And I think that is what we need to work on from now to the end of the season. And hopefully we see some of that uh, in this game against Leeds. Um, as I already mentioned there, big news obviously is that Zahar is going to be missing this game because of his hamstring strain that he picked up against Newcastle. And unfortunately, he's going to miss probably the next couple of games as well. It's going to be touch and go whether he's fit for the Brian game in a few weeks. And if he's missing for that, the form Brian are on at the moment, it's going to be that's going to be a bit of a nervy one to say the least. Um, but focusing on this game, obviously without him in the side, it makes Leeds' chances of winning a lot better, you know, a lot shorter. Um, Shorter odds, and I, I do think we're going to struggle um, with, without Wilf in the side. We always do, but 
it's going to be very as is going to be the key now that Will's not in the team. Will as they take the reins and you know really be our main um, attacking outlet, our main, our main creative outlet. I think he would definitely take that take that um, position well in the side. I think he has shown that he's got that maturity in the performances this season um, that he can take that creative pressure on his shoulders if you like. I think other players need to when Will's not in, other players need to step up, and I hope Roy obviously drills that into the team that some players have got to perform a lot better than they have done um, and yeah I think let's if I can move on to the starting lineup now it'll probably make more sense on to how we adapt to having not having Wolf in the side for me I would stick with the same back four that we had against Newcastle I think that um, having well I personally would love Mitchell to start ahead of uh, Van Arnold in this game for the main reason that I think Van Arnold going forward of course we all know is quite a good attacking threat he gets to him full up bold in the attacks puts good ball, good balls into the box and is there or thereabouts around the box good man to have at breaking forward problem is when we lose the ball and then we've lost it so many times breaking forward on counter attack this season not really being clinical at all on counter attacks as, as i've said already the amount of times that the opposition can just play it down that that our left hand side their right hand side channel and find loads of the space to work with and put crosses into the box because van arnott's nowhere to be seen because he's busy jogging back from an attack if you put as much effort as he does going forward into coming back and defending, um, we'd be okay, but he doesn't. And I think that's where Mitchell's a lot better because like wan was um, in the side, much more of a... joined the attacks, but was much more of a defensive, uh, reliable defensive option at fullback. He definitely was there or thereabouts in the defence. Uh, you wouldn't get that space behind him, is my point, uh, if Mitchell was in the side. And I think against Leeds, with the speed and pace they have with Harrison, Rafinha, Rafinha having a fantastic season and a lot of skill on that on both hands, both left and right hand sides. Pair that with Bamford, who of course will most likely score against us because it's an ex-player who didn't play very well for us on loan, was rubbish on loan with us. But it was it is almost written that he's going to score. Um, obviously scored in the reverse fixture as well. Um, having that front three, which has a lot of creativity or and a lot of you know fluidity in their attack. Aging back four as well. I think sticking Mitchell out there would be is what we need, especially with Van Arnold's ability to get lost further up the pitch. I think Roy will stick with Van Arnold. That being said, which I you know I really hope he puts Mitchell in for this game. I really do. But I can see Roy not changing a winning side. That is typically what he does. If we're winning, he likes to keep the same side to keep some sort of form going. But I think you've got to treat each game differently. It's a different opposition and you've got different um, players to worry about. And I think Mitchell would handle the threat of Harrison and Rafinha a lot better than Van Arnholt. Um So I would have him at left back, although I can see Roy sticking with the same side. Dan and Cahill at centre-back, Wade's in goal, of course, and uh, Klein at right back. Maybe Ward coming in, he's back as well. Um Riedervold and Luke in the middle. Riedervold, a fantastic in signing a new deal. He's going to be massive for our rebuild going forward. Uh, and he's just our best creative midfielder. He box the box. He creates. He scores as well. Great strike against Newcastle. What a hit. He, he's got everything in his locker. I just love Jairo Riedervold. Playing deep, picking up the ball, playing passes forward, joining the attack. He's got it all. It's like a young Macca, but even better, in my opinion. And that's no disrespect to Macca. He's one of my favourite players. But uh, he just fills in that role beautifully and I would so he's got to start for me um Eze of course uh probably Townsend is going to start if we playing this 4-4-2 and then Benteke and Ayu probably up front or Mateta and Ayu I doubt he's going to start him uh it doesn't look like he's looking like he's going to bleed him in Mateta but uh, I, I want we all want to see him play we all want to see him play and hopefully Roy does get his debut quickly Leeds, obviously, as I said, we know their threats are down the wing. The way they break and counter-attack with pace, they've got, they're the, probably one of the fittest teams in the division. And against an ageing Palace side, the oldest team in the Premier League, uh, that is going to be a problem for us. Hopefully, Roy manages the team well and we get subs in early and at the right points in the game if we're under pressure. Get the subs in, keep fresh legs on the pitch. As I said, Bamford's probably going to score. I can see that happening. Other players to watch out for, though, the, the back three, although of ailing... Um, um, Stroy Stroyik, I think is how you pronounce his name, and um, Cooper. On paper, a good back three, but they have conceded goals. Um, that I don't think it's going to be a clean sheet by any means. I think this could be a, a high scoring game. Um, Q and nil nil now, but um, yeah, I think there could be goals in this. But that is where you got to target at pace down in those flanks when the when the wing backs bomb forward, and just having confidence to put men forward in the attack. Um, because we got to give the game to Leeds, we can't just sit back and I think so. Well, sit back and soak it up to a degree, but break with intent and, you know, a clinical edge. That's going to be key. 
Score prediction for this, I'm going to go with a 2-1 Palace win. I think we can do this. Um, it's going to be hard. I don't think we'll keep a clean sheet. And then obviously Leeds will, after that re reverse fixture, they're going to want to come back and have, have their revenge, if you like. So I can see them having a bundle of energy. And first five, ten minutes is going to be so important. Not conceding, trying to slow the pace down or the game down to our tempo. Just a typical away day performance under Roy Hodgson is what we need for this game in particular. And if all goes well, a win and we're into 10th and in the top 10 and it's all looking rosy. Let me know your score predictions down in the comments below, guys, your uh, team lineups, what you think Roy will set the team up as. And yeah, thank you so much for watching, guys. Like, share, subscribe. Can we get this win to get us in the top 10?